Hey, what's going on guys? So today we'll be doing the top three classes for new players. If you guys have been watching my channel for a while now, then you know I did a top three classes for new players about seven to eight months ago. I wanted to do an updated version just because there's been a ton of patch changes to the classes in terms of nerfs and abilities, also some buffs to the classes, and then not to mention we even got the new warden class. So I feel like it's long past due to do a updated version of this so hopefully you guys enjoy and let's jump into it so the first class we're going to be checking out is the summoner the summoner is a ranged dps class and they're really unique because they have a little minion creature that follows them around forever it's called a familiar it's like a little cat creature as you can see in the video in the top left it kind of follows you around you can design that too uh, to look whatever however you want so that's pretty cool you can get a little costume and stuff like that uh, but they're just a very easy class to play because they're very hard to die on uh, honestly they're probably the best solo leveling class just because you have your familiar with you and it's really hard to really take any type of damage whatsoever even though the storyline is pretty easy to do on any class it's kind of brain dead nowadays uh, it's just made so that you get to the end game super quickly uh, but besides that really the summoner is great for someone with high ping too I've had multiple friends over the years who have switched from other classes to the summoner just because their peen was really bad and uh in blade soul if you have high peen it's really hard to play most of the classes especially melee classes so the summoner is one of the exceptions of the classes where it's probably the best class with high peen just because it does so well so if you have like over like 120 130 peen like pretty high peen maybe like 150 pushing 200 peen um, I actually really recommend checking them out because that's going to be a class that you, you can actually play pretty decently on and not have horrible DPS uh, compared to most. Another thing to mention is they are Lin exclusive so you can only play them as a little uh, rat race as people call them and you have little uh, cat creature ears or tails or whatever type of tails and ears you want to have. Uh, a lot of people, you know, it's kind of one of those things where some people love them, some people hate them. Of course, if you completely hate them and despise this race of uh, thing that you can play in Blaine's Soul the Lens, then obviously you don't want to play the Summoner because that's the only choice you have. Um, in terms of builds, there's two different builds for the Summoner. There's a Wind build and an Earth build. Unfortunately, the Earth build is really the only good build to do nowadays the summoner the wind build has been pretty bad for quite a while uh, i've seen parses of wind summoners with the same gear as the earth summoner do way less dps than the earth uh due to this a lot of wind summoners almost all of them that i've seen have switched over to the earth build just because of how more dominant it is so unfortunately you know if you like wind build uh just know if you play it you're gonna be at a pretty big disadvantage like you're a huge disadvantage compared to earth summoner so in terms of that i really recommend just going to earth it's gonna save you a lot of trouble and then you'll be able to get the most out of the class hopefully in the future they change that or fix that because that is unfortunate if you end up enjoying wind build uh you're gonna be pretty damn weak going that build uh, besides that in terms of pvp they always been pretty damn solid i wouldn't really say they're like the top top class but they're also not the bottom they're kind of just like somewhere in the middle of the pack um with their familiar they're actually just super annoying to play against because their cat cat creature just runs up to you and freaking cc chains you stuns you dazes you knocks you down all these type of annoying things where it just it's very irritating personally for me they're my least favorite class to fight in pvp just because of how annoying the familiar little cat creature is like he just won't get off your ass the whole time you're in like a 1v1 uh so that's i personally just completely hate fighting them but uh i would just say they're pretty solid so if you want to do them in pvp you definitely you know will have a pretty good time but again it always, always boils down to just you know your ping if you have good ping, if you're actually good with the class and everything like that, in terms of at least 1v1s and 3v3s because those are gear equalized. So when we look at the party utility that this class has, it has two things that it really brings to the table that I think are great for the party. One is they have a stealth mechanic, and the only other class that has this mechanic is the assassin, which it really made sense on them as a stealth class, but in terms of the summoner, it really does it. I find it weird that they even have a stealth mechanic. It's like, it doesn't really fit the class at all in my opinion, but I guess they just added it for some apparent reason, but it, it is pretty cool. What it does is it allows basically the whole party to like maybe get past like a group of mobs. It, it's kind of situational, depends on how you use it, but you can get past like a giant group of mobs like Nara Foundry or something. Just allows you to stealth the party. Uh, in the past, it was actually way more useful for something like Ebendrit Citadel, the dungeon. In the past, when it first came out, you had to have the stealth mechanic to be able to clear the boss. Otherwise, the boss would just like slap you in the face and kill the whole party. Uh, so actually, when Ebendrit Citadel came out, you had to have a summoner or assassin in your party always. So that was pretty cool for that mechanic. Uh, fortunately, nowadays, you know, Ebendrit Citadel, you just face roll it with any type of class. It doesn't even really matter. 
Uh, but they do have one other party utility I think is really useful. I guess you could you could really consider not really a party utility, but I find it really useful in parties in general. What they can do is the little familiar cat they have, they actually can put it onto a dead uh, ally and revive them while they're still DPSing. So otherwise, you know, any other class would have to run, stop DPSing, and hold down F for like freaking 20 seconds to revive a dead ally. What the summoner can do is just put their uh, cat creature onto the dead ally continue to DPS and do their damage and the cat creature will revive the ally and does like this weird little like voodoo like ritual thing where it like slaps you in the face like 20 times it's really hilarious and then it instantly revives you so it's actually a really clutch ability that can save a team member and it still allows you to do a ton of damage so it's really really useful in my opinion it's kind of underrated I think it's a great ability besides the stealth mechanic and then also the familiar revive ability they also have a pretty cool iframe which is called sea shroud it allows your party to get uh, iframe which basically if you don't know what iframe is it just means invulnerability so if a boss does an attack and you use the iframe at the right time it allows you to take zero damage from it so it's really useful and crucial in blade and soul so having sea shroud let's say the boss does like a big uh damage aoe you can use sea shroud at the correct timing and basically your whole party will take zero damage so really clutch ability can help you survive a boss or a raid dungeon whatever you're doing definitely essential to a party and will help them out a lot Besides that, really just in general, I feel like the Summoner is just a solid class. If you're a new player and you're not really sure what to play, there's an overwhelming amount of classes in this game. If you can't really decide, I really just, I really just, you know, recommend picking the Summoner. Like, they're just a solid class. You're not going to go wrong with them. If you gear up a Summoner and play Endgame and put a lot of time into them, you're not going to regret it and be like, oh my gosh, this class sucks. Overall, it's just always going to be a solid class. I really recommend them for, really, they're like the new player's friendly perfect class for a new player like that this is the new player's class if you're a new player and you're not familiar with blade and soul at all i definitely recommend at least checking them out and seeing if you enjoy playing them next class on the list is going to be the gunslinger uh gunslinger is still probably the most popular class in the game after being out for over a year now and there's a couple good reasons why number one they're just very simple to play like their rotations are pretty simple they're not super complicated or anything like that uh, the fire build especially is super simple you can actually just use the autopilot mode which is called simple mode where you just press right click and it does the full rotation for you for most classes it actually is pretty bad but for fire gunner build is actually pretty good it still keeps your dps pretty high and that kind of just gives you an example right there of how easy the rotation is if simple mode can do it for you uh, so not a hard class and by any means besides that they also have the most mobility in the game so that's actually a big factor because when you think of like a a high damage range class you're thinking that they might not have good like iframe and mobilities because they're ranged like how the warlock is but they actually have the most mobility out of all the classes because they can spam their slingshot ability which kind of jumps them across the map like 30 times um, i'm exaggerating but it is a lot i think like four three four times like a lot and it's just kind of like crazy that a range class has that much mobility so combining that and then also they have some of the top dps numbers still even after getting a good amount of nerfs uh it just made them such a solid class like i really recommend them for any new player who just wants to do a ton of damage they also have an alpha call ability which basically allows you to reset a lot of the key abilities for example they alpha call ability allows you to reset soul burn and soul burn is the best party buff in the game which boosts the damage of your full party gives them awakened abilities ton of great stuff so when they use alpha call it allows you to use it twice in a row which is a really big deal because you're getting that buff for twice the amount of time so having alpha call in your party is super essential for a lot of end game raids and dungeons makes everything easier also resets abilities of some other great abilities like for example a soul fighter if they uh, resurrect the party they have ability for that you can actually reset the cooldown of that which is pretty surprising but you actually can so not only do they have super high mobility super high damage some of the top damage in the game super easy to learn and play they also have alpha call which is super useful for party utility so this class literally has everything like it has everything you want so if you just don't mind playing a ranged dps class like i really recommend this class and then last but not least i've been going on forever but the gunslinger is so good uh also you know just being a ranged class like you can play it with higher ping and still do pretty decent you know compared to most melee classes that are very ping reliant so again this is a great ping reliant class too because you don't have to have super great ping obviously you know the better ping the better you're gonna play 
but you don't have to have like really really low like 20 ping to play it like example Kung Fu Masters. In terms of build I definitely recommend the fire build. It's been more dominant than the shadow build for quite a while now. Uh, shadow build definitely needs a buff. It's been quite weaker than flame for way too long. Um, overall it's kind of sad though because I feel like shadow build is way cooler. I love the animations and everything but unfortunately if you do go shadow build you will be at a DPS loss compared to fire build. Um, shadow build still does pretty good D DPS honestly just because gunslinger is such a strong uh, damage class but just know fire build would definitely get you bigger numbers and bigger burst if you go that build. Uh, eventually you know the awakenings update will come to here where they remove elements and change the whole skill tree uh, but that's in Korea right now, so that will come for at least probably three to four months, if not, you know, longer. So I definitely, you know, recommend going Fire Build if you want to get the most out of the Gunslinger right now. Uh, besides that, for PvP, they're still very solid in PvP. I think some professional player uh, won with a Gunslinger first place. I'm not too sure I don't keep up with uh, the esports of Blaine Soul that much, but I did hear about that. Uh, also, I believe it's still like number one in Korea for sits v sits. Not too sure on that. Uh, don't quote me, but I know they're still very powerful. Uh, they have received a good amount of nurse to their sits v sits just because in the past when they first came out, you would literally see videos of a geared gunslinger like a whale one, like we're talking about super geared, uh, legendary triangle gems, everything like that. Just run into a full party of people in sits v sits and just one shot the entire team with their burst. Uh, obviously, they've been toned down since then because that was pretty OP. Um, just recently their F ability I believe got uh, changed so now it can be blocked like projectiles so that was a big change because before you couldn't block it with iframes and stuff I believe. Again I'm not a big PvPer but just kind of quoting some things I've heard. Uh, so overall they're still a very strong class in PvP but they have got some nerfs and reductions to especially since we sit just because they were a little too OP and I do agree with that with all the videos I've seen. Uh, so overall though if you want to play them in PvP or PvE they're still going to be a very solid class. Just recommend them for anyone in general who just wants to do a ton of damage and uh, shoot things. Last but not least is the Warden class. Now the Warden class is a melee tank class. Uh, tank DPS hybrid. Now you might be wondering why am I recommending a tank class for a new player and the big reason is boom they're the easiest tank class to play in the game period. They're also the newest class in Blade and Soul. Uh, with them being such an easy tank class compared to the Kung Fu Master and Blade Master which are actually pretty difficult, this class is very easy to tank on which makes it kind of good for a new player in my opinion because it kind of gets your feet wet and lets you experience how to play Blade and Soul as a tank. Obviously, if you despise tanking and you hate being a tank, you might not enjoy it, but you can always just go the lightning build spec, which is more DPS focused. You still can tank in that spec, but it's more DPS. Um, you just go that spec and just be an off tank, where basically, you know, if there's no Blade Master or Kung Fu Master, obviously you're probably going to have to tank, but otherwise, if they're in the party, you can just be a DPSer. So, there's still a, like a such a choice, you don't have to always be the tank, but just know if there is no other tank in the party they're gonna expect you to tank and if you don't they're probably gonna flame you so just keep that in mind if you go this class but I just feel like it's such a great class because you actually get to learn how to tank you get to learn the mechanics and kind of know what you're doing so this is kind of the great introduction class to being a tank. It's like tank 101 in my opinion. Like really, like this is the class you play before you switch to like the Kung Fu Master or the Blade Master in my opinion. Like it's this class that just teaches you how to play the game correctly and be a good tank because you can make mistakes that you otherwise couldn't make on a Kung Fu Master and still be able to be a pretty great tank just because of how strong they are. Besides that, they also have the best party buff in the game, the Soul Burn. This was exclusive to the Warlock class for around two years, and now it's going to be with the Warden class. So this is actually a pretty big deal that another class has this ability, because as I said, best party buff in game, period. Does insane amount of damage for the party, gives them awakened abilities, super essential for any party. Uh, any endgame raiders are going to require to have a Soul Burn. If you don't have a Soul Burn, you're just at a big loss for your DPS. Very, very important buff, so having this is going to be really essential and help out your party by a lot. Wardens are always wanted nowadays just because of that. Uh, Warlock was originally kind of that, but now they're kind of like a time distortion class now where they just use that instead of Soul Burn because you can't have two different Soul Burns up at the same time. So unfortunate for the Warlocks, but great for the Wardens. Besides that, they have two different builds, which is Lightning Build and Frost Build. I kind of explained Lightning Build earlier, it's the DPS more focused one, where it's a little more risky. Uh, your top DPS skills in the Blood Rage tab basically uh, takes a portion of your HP when you use them, but you do a lot of damage. So it's one of those builds where if you want to get the maximum DPS out of the class, Lightning obviously is going to be the better route. 
The other build is the Frost build. Frost build is the more safe and more popular build just because overall it's an easier tanking spec to do. Very, very hard to die on the Frost spec and really any endgame seriously playing Warden class for like the top raids like um, Twilight Temple or uh, Vortez Temple are going to be going most of the time Frost build just because of how safe and easy it is to play. And overall, it still does a lot of DPS. It's not like Lightning is a huge difference. It's just a little bit better. Uh, so that one's really up to you. Both builds are fine. Both builds can tank. But I really recommend, honestly, if you're a new player, probably going Frost for Endgame. Just because I feel like Frost build is overall just a safer build and you're still doing a lot of DPS. Um, you know, I've seen a couple wardings that go Lightning and that's fine too. I'm probably one of those people that would go the Lightning build just because I, I'm kind of crazy. I want to go like that big DPS numbers. But, you know, it's kind of really up to you. Both are fine for sure. Another thing to mention in terms of their PvP, um, Warden is one of the top classes in PvP right now. They're very, very strong. Majority of the Wardens I see are going Lightning build for PvP, especially for 1v1s, just because overall it's a stronger DPS spec. Of course, for like a 1v1, you're not tanking at boss. So, you know, the Lightning spec is going to be stronger. You can one-shot people easier. There's a couple um, montages of people doing videos of... Lightning Warden like one-shotting people with their F ability, I believe, or I think it's their 4. Uh, so they do a ton of damage, that's for sure. In terms of Sisvi Sids, I'm not too sure how good they are. I'm assuming they're just as good as they are in 1v1. So uh, if you want to do PvP on them, that's fine too. I'm sure they are very strong in the Whale Battleground Sisvi Sids, so definitely can do that. Also to mention, you can play them as the Jin or Gone race, and eventually we will get the Lin race uh, Warden class. Yes, you heard me, the Giant Greatsword. Uh, class we're gonna have as the Lin race. This was revealed in a teaser for Korea for OGN. So eventually we will be getting that for North America and Europe. Who knows how long that will be? Maybe two to three months, maybe more, maybe less. We'll have to see how fast they want to put it into our region. But we will have that eventually. So you, if you want to play a Lin class, uh, you can just you know play the class right now as a Jin, level it up, gear it up, and then when they launch the Lin class in North America and Europe, you just buy a little. Uh, race change voucher and there you go and then you have your Lin. So a couple races you can play on that's always cool. So just to sum it up, really the Warden is probably one of the most wanted classes in the game right now because not only are they a great tank, they also have the best party buff in the game Soulburn which I said earlier. So it just really sums them up as something that every party wants. Whenever they see a Warden class they're gonna want that in their party because they're so useful and that's really great for a new player because they allow you to get into more parties. Maybe even dodge some AP requirements that usually let you know some some people ask for like 1k AP, sometimes you could probably get in, sneak in with like 950, sneak in with that 950 AP because you're awarded and you got that special sword burn privilege baby and <laughs> probably do that. But overall, I just recommend them. Also, just because they're such a solid and easy tank class to play, becoming a tank is actually just going to make you a better player because you have to learn how to tank the boss, you have to learn mechanics. You have to learn how to dodge iframes, use your iframes to dodge boss attacks. Kind of know what you're doing instead of just being kind of like a brain dead DPS doing nothing. This is actually a big deal because it'll make you a better player. So you'll actually be good on whatever class you choose to play if you get tired of the warding or you don't want to play it anymore. So I really think it's a great solid first class. And I find it weird saying this because whenever I think of a tank class, I really don't recommend a tank class for a new player. Just because they've always been so hard, but the Warden class really changes that. So that's really just my thoughts on the Warden. Definitely I would just recommend trying them out, seeing if you enjoy them. Now this class is more of like honorable mention, but I still want to kind of talk about it just because I still feel like the Warlock class is a great addition for any new player for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, they're just pretty simple to play. You can play them with high ping and still do pretty good. Also, their simple mode for Ice Warlock is actually pretty strong, which is kind of surprising because simple mode for the majority of classes are not very good. Uh, only a couple are pretty decent. Uh, besides that, they also do have Soul Burn. So, you know, before the Warden class was out, they were the only class with it, which was really valuable. Now with the Warden class having it, they kind of pushed them back into using more time distortion. Uh, it's an ability which basically resets the cooldown of certain skills. So, unfortunately, if there is a Warden class in the party, then your party members will ask you to go Time Distortion instead of Soul Burn because you can't have two different Soul Burn abilities up at the same time, so you might as well not waste it and use something else. And Time Distortion is actually pretty decent, so, you know, the Warlock joke is they stopped being Soul Burn slaves and now they're Time Distortion slaves, so it never changes for the Warlock. They always have to do something for the party. Uh, but overall, I still feel like they're a pretty solid class because, you know, not all the time, it's, except like when you're in like a raid, you know, obviously you'll have Wardens in your group. 
uh, with your clan and stuff. But for the majority of like parties that you're running the daily challenge and stuff, sometimes you won't run into the warden class and eventually, you know, the warden class is still pretty new so a lot of people have it, but eventually they won't be as popular as they are right now. And then you'll have times where you're the only soul burn user in your party and you can just use soul burn yourself and still be really useful for everyone. And considering they're just so easy to play as a ranged class with high ping and their rotations are pretty simple, I still find them a very great class for a new player. Uh, again, you know, they kind of been a little bit overshadowed with the warding being able to do tanking, soul burn, and just be a great DPSer. But I still feel like the Warlock is a great addition if you want to check them out. Uh, besides that, they do have two different builds. They have Ice Build and Shadow Build. Ice Build uses uh, Dragon Calls and Windstorm, and then Shadow Build uses Dragon Helix for their main DPS abilities. Both of them are pretty strong right now. Uh, Shadow Warlock in Korea has like some weird bud going on where it's doing like 2 million DPS or some crazy number, so I'm pretty sure that's not accurate. I've heard people mention that was some type of bud with the new update they're working on, the Awakening update. Uh, but for Frost Warlock, that's always been personally my favorite. I love how the Dragon Call looks. The animation is like freaking beautiful. It's like blue and like dark colors of like a giant dragon. I personally love it. Um, but really, both builds are pretty good. I would say Ice Warlock is a little bit stronger with endgame gear from what I've seen. But Shadow is still pretty good too. Uh, if you want to do PvP, the build you want to go is Shadow. Shadow is always stronger for PvP. And as far as PvP, they're actually pretty powerful, especially in 1v1s with their Thrall um, familiar. Kind of similar to how the Summoner has their familiar, but it's a giant Thrall creature. So even though they might not be the number one priority class for parties anymore when they used to be the only class available with the Soulburn buff, I still feel like they're very valuable for parties and they just are really easy to play and learn. So I definitely recommend checking them out, especially if you have that high ping as I mentioned and still feel like they're just a solid class for a new player. So that really concludes my top three classes for new players. If you guys have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments. Um, if you absolutely hated this video, make sure you leave a comment. If you absolutely love this video, leave a comment too. I'll see you guys in the next video real soon and I'm out.